I think overall, instead of going through another map, I think what I'm going to do is show you some cool things that I noticed with this tracer and just, again, hit these points, right? So I'm going to hit some of these points a little bit harder. And aside from hitting those points, I'm going to end the micro section as, all right, this is what I've kind of talked about. Now, this is a cool thing that I noticed that I didn't talk about. This is a little bit of a cool thing that I noticed that I didn't really talk about. So again, I'm not going to go through tempo because I've been harping on tempo this entire time, right? Oop, that's, you guys cannot see that color. So this one, we know. And he's not just playing second tempo, right? He's playing third tempo a lot in this match as well. So he has been doing a fantastic job changing and adapting his style incredibly well on the individual level. Really happy with what I saw from Kepster there. He He's, a, again, pitiful example as why he's going for it. Again, sticks. We've seen this, right? I want to kind of show um, specifically like blank usage and recall usage. And I want to like show you specifically how he can get away with having this many blinks so many times. Because um, I didn't really talk about, well, how is he, right? And I guess this goes more into the cool things, right? I'm going to show you how he's able to get away with having this many blinks very often, right? I'm going to show you something cool about recall, right? why it does it feel like he has recall on cooldown all the time and then i'm going to show you some other small things that i maybe some criticism that i would tell him about pulse like maybe hold or how to get sticks more or like what you could do to get high percentage sticks like he is and then tempo i'm not going to really talk about that one too much because i kind of went in and broke that down already for you guys the space manipulation i'm going to lead to the side um, the only thing I kind of would talk about is it will go into how he's able to get these um, blinks or have so many of these blinks. So, in order to show you kind of what I mean, let's go to let's go to second point because I think he plays it really, really well on second point to kind of show you this kind of stuff. All right. Okay. I believe this fight will be the fight that I show you, and then there's one more fight on second that I kind of want to show, or, yeah, there's one more fight on second I want to show you to kind of show you why is he able to have, like, these blinks on pretty much one and a half every single fight, right? He's playing practically a counter comp. He was playing a counter comp to him in a way, right? They have a Torp here. Now they have a Tracer. He has a lot of threats that can deal with him. He has a Brig as well, right? A lot of threats that could make it really hard, so it should be even harder for him to get this value. Right? Cut. We'll go back here and I'll show you like an example, right? So we, I talked about like him destroying turret, me not agreeing with that recall because he didn't need to get like that 50 HP back in my eyes. Um, but here is where I want to start, right? Is right when his recall is down. Okay, he has two blinks right now and he's playing here. Look how he's looking to play around the space. He plays around the corner. Now he's blinking towards cart. Now he's blinking to the corner again, right? Remember how I talked about one and a half, one and a half, one and a half? He's at one and a half. A lot of tracers I know instantly would have double blinked out. They would have blinked from that corner all the way to the choke and been like, all right, like I need to get out of here. Like I'm going to die if, I, if I'm still here. He plays it very calmly. He blinks to the cart. He's crouching to LOS himself so that they have to push past the cart to get him. He sees that they're starting to push past. He has another blink back up. He goes to this corner. Now, again, he has a blink and a half already, right? Again, plays around the LOS on the left-hand side. He has a blink and a half. He has another blink already up, right? He goes towards this right-hand corner. He's hugging this terrain. He's going into his team, right? He knows that the enemy team is holding more potentially of the side that he's on. So from attacker perspective, the left-hand side, and then he goes a little bit more towards his team and the side that his team controls. He recalls back in, recover some HP, also be in a better position because his team's looking to push back out again, right? Great location there for his recall. And again, even though he has, his team is kind of pushing forward, he goes to try to destroy Lamp. Lamp is incredibly low. He recalls, or he recalls, he blinks back again to this corner because he knows he's in a little bit of danger, right? And boom, already he's already walking forward. He blinks, he has another blink already down. He doesn't have a blink and a half, but he has a blink and he's playing around that team aggression very well. Played around that left corner, right? 
going to destroy turret. You see him go to the right corner now. He has another blink already up. He waits a second for his blink to get up. He starts to walk forward as his team takes the aggro. Now he's going to blink back, right? He still has a blink. Here is when it gets a little bit more of, oh, like, he doesn't have any blinks now. The reason he doesn't, it's okay that he doesn't have blinks. Mega Pack is hacked here. Bird Ring is right behind him. He doesn't need the blinks. He also had recall in two seconds, right? But overall, I just went through an entire fight, and that fight was not a short fight. That was like a 30-second fight. That's a long fight. And this guy, for 30 seconds, 35 seconds, was able to hold on to his blinks incredibly, incredibly well, right? He's consistently holding these blinks. He's consistently doing a really good job of consistently having them up. And, again, insult to injury. Why is that? Why is he able to have so many blinks? Why does it feel like he's always in the fights? It's the terrain. It's where he's positioning himself, right? You notice, and I'll show you in this fight specifically as well, right? Or this next fight, sorry, coming up, about terrain. So this fight pretty much right here. Boom, boom. All right. Back up. Perfect. Okay, right here is where I want to see. I talk about this again, but watch how he plays, right? Like I said, he's the most mobile character in the game. A lot of people approach that and are like, well, he's, I'm so mobile, like, I don't have to do the normal stuff that I'm taught in Overwatch. Reducing my hitbox, like, playing kind of safe, especially when I have recall. I can play aggro, but you need to play a smart aggression, right? He's going aggressive, but as he's going aggressive, he's going towards the left-hand side so that they can lose LOS of him. When he recalls, you see as he walks up, he, he's walking to a side corner there so that he can potentially LOS if he needs to. Now he walks back up, he went forward with a blank aggression because he sees that his team's behind him to go aggressive, right? doing a fantastic job here in terms of understanding okay like i have my blanks or like okay i need i can chill here for a few seconds because it's safe i can get a decent a bit of damage out right because i'm at that good range i'm not right on top of them but i'm at a good medium range where the effective range does not fall off and i can still spam he has the blinks he's like okay i'm good to go let's go and here is a perfect example of going aggro at the right time right now I'll lean into not just the Hey, I have good blank usage. I have good recall usage. Eight seconds, one second, or one blank, one and a half blinks, right? He's very far ahead of his team. He sees his team there, right? Five second recall now. The amount of times in the games, and I, I challenge you to go back in this VOD particularly, or when I upload this to YouTube, look back at the YouTube VOD. Think about how many times you see that recall go to five seconds and him look to do an aggressive action after it goes to five seconds. I promise you 90% of the time when he looked to do something aggressive, he had five seconds left on his recall. Five seconds. The guy understands that when recall is about five seconds or so, he does a fantastic job of understanding if he should go aggressive or not. Sometimes it's not five seconds. Sometimes it's eight seconds. Sometimes it's seven seconds. But the median, so the most often time that he goes aggressive when that number is on uh, cooldown is five. Because he feels as if with two blanks and utilizing terrain, he can survive long enough in the back line to wait that five seconds. Hello there. And again, it's like a small detailed point, like cool, like recall, like awesome. But like there's, again, I challenge you to look at this, right? Look at the tracers that play an L. Look to see if they do something similar like that to Kevster. If they do, then I'll take it back. Like, maybe I'm overlooking this, but I promise you they don't. And this is where it gets really important with Tracers. Understand your recall usage. Understand how proactive you can be even when it is on cooldown, right? And again, like, he knows this. His team's behind him. He has recall back up. He has two blinks. He goes for this play. Because he knows that he can recall out if he needs to, right? He blinks behind. He doesn't need the recall. But again, look how aggressive he's playing. He's playing this aggressive. He knows the MP is coming. He knows he has his recall up as well. He's going hard. Because he knows he can, right? He now uses the recall. The fight's already over. They won the fight, right? Show you another example where it's like five seconds with this recall, right? Let's look at the continuation of this fight. Going into blinks and going into recall, right? 
Oh, yeah, sorry. Fuck. I gotta find a good way to look at this. I apologize. I keep, like, moving cam. I gotta, like, find a good way to put cam. Maybe I put cam here, because, like, I did not think about where I wrote stuff, because I wrote stuff over there. Maybe I, like, put cam, like, here. I don't know. Let's look. Is that pretty good? Yeah, that's, that's a little bit lower. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. I feel you, I feel you. All right, perfect. Sorry about that. I forgot about the cooldowns there on the bottom right. I apologize. Um, Let's see here. Okay. So this fight, like I said, we're going to look at blinks again. How does he manage these blinks really well in his recall usage, right? So right here, back up just because like I kind of like lost track. He has one blink. He has recall. We talked about him still staying aggressive, sticking here, right? They're able to get multiple kills on the Atlanta side, but Atlanta is able to trade back these kills quite efficiently, right? He goes for soldier here, right when he's low blinks, instantly goes to a corner. He doesn't try to duel the soldier on the heal pad. He's going to a corner. He looks at his threat to the left. He's going to look to his threat at the right. He sees that he has multiple threats on the right, and he now knows that soldier is behind him shooting him. He blinks more to the left so he can reduce the hitbox there. Now he looks back to see where Soldier is. You see Soldier is quite far. He's going to go to a position where his team can support him again. Sees D.Va demecking on point while that's happening. Goes for the D.Va kill. He's going to go now to this corner. He's going to wait here until he has two blinks back up potentially. Right? 28 HP, 30 HP. Recalls. He knows that he has to play a little bit safer now, right? He's not going past that door frame. He's playing by that door frame. <clears throat> he's playing to reduce his hitbox, right? Nine seconds on the recall, one second. He has blinks. He might look to go a little bit more forward. Recall is now at five seconds. I'm looking for Kevster to do something here in a few moments. And right now, that is him looking to do something, right? He's looking to potentially go towards a left side flank or a right side flank to go aggressive, right? He sees that they're potentially pushing down main, so he's getting ready to potentially collapse behind them if they do push down main, right? He's in a good position to go after Pelican here. He tries, but he's unsuccessful, right? Pelican's able to get a good one clip, but he's still behind them, right? He's still able to provide a lot of pressure. He has those two blinks. He's still playing the terrain. He has the one blink. He's playing the terrain. He's not going too aggressive yet. Sees his team is going first tempo. He has two blinks. He has recall. He's going to go really, really aggressive. But as that's happening, he has one blink, one and a half blinks. He's still playing that terrain to his left-hand side, right? He's not moving to that terrain from that terrain. Right? Unless he knows he can go for an absolute play like that. An absolute kill like that. Right? Again, just fantastic play. He has no recall. He's playing around that terrain. He has recall up in four seconds. He's just going aggressive. He uses both of his blinks to help his team out. His team's coming back. He has recall back up. He's not scared. He's going aggressive. You see that he's us utilizing his blinks in a forward position, right? And he's just killing these staggers on point. Five seconds again. He's going to look to kill Pelican and potentially go for Eris there. He sees Eris. Now he's going to go for Eris. He's pressuring to go to Eris. He has recall. He can do that, right? Again. Going back to the points, right? These are the basic points to keep in mind. The more advanced points to keep in mind for here. For those people that are interested. Terrain. Abuse it. Use it. Reduce your hitbox. Just because you're a mobile character does not mean terrain does not exist to you. Terrain exists to you. It makes you more relevant, harder to kill, be able to stay in a position or stick onto somebody for a longer period of time, right? It allows you to refresh your abilities faster. Terrain. Huge part there. Recall usage. Five second rule. Is what I like to call it. When you have recall on five seconds, try to look to do something proactive. If five seconds is too short of a time or too long of a time or too short of a time, try to theory craft it more. Try to test it out more. Push yourself to test out what you can do, right? That's the big thing you got to keep in mind. Yeah. In terms of pulse bump, let's look at two ways that he could potentially, I'll actually just look at one example. Because again, he's playing it really well with the pulse. But we'll look at this fight here, actually, specifically, I'm pretty sure. It might have been this fight or the next fight. When he goes for a stick. Iris is going to go on to a Zen here. I believe it is this fight. Yep. 
Okay, I'll back up a little bit because I went a little bit too far forward there. But we see it, right? He has stick. He's looking to pressure with stick. Now, we already know that he's going to lob this stick on the right-hand side, right? You see he's dead on the right. He's getting shot a little bit on the back. So he, he kind of goes for this lob because he sees the breaks there, the zens here, right? So, do I condone lobbing pulse bombs? I don't. I hate this. I hate lobbing pulses. Do I think it's okay here? It's not the worst. Why is it not the worst? Well, look how much of an enclosed area they're in. They can't really escape the pulse. Even though it's a shorter LOS, it's still quite a small LOS that's covered around there, right? So my big thing for you guys here to keep in mind is you could go for this play. Yes, 100%. But as somebody already in chat kind of brought up, I believe it was you, Pyro, you brought up why didn't he just go stick the break? Like if he stuck the break, it would have been much better for him, right? I 100% agree with that. He should be closer. Look at this. I bet you, if I look at Masses POV right now, he does not have Tail Whip. He does not have Bash. He does have Bash up, Tail Whip's on cooldown. But look where he's looking right now, right? He's not concerned about what's beside him. He's concerned about what's in front of him. Because he sees multiple Glad members and a Trank running at him and his Zen, right? So Kepster has no sort of pressure on him right now. If I'm Kepster, what I need to do is, especially when I still have recall up as well, don't be scared to just walk up. Walk up and just go for a stick. <clears throat> Two rules of thumbs with sticks, okay? Is this. Whoop. And Kepster did this well majority of the time, but I want to make sure that it's clear to you guys. How do you be successful at getting pulse bomb kills? How do you get these sticks consistently? Well, number one. That seems like forehead, but is true, is be close. Be as close as possible to where your hand is touching their hitbox. Your guns are touching their hitbox. You could get a melee in to get that stick. That should be your goal. Because every time you can hit a melee, you can hit a stick. 110%. And that's what you need to look to do, right? You need to be on top of them as much as possible. He's too far from this, right? He's still throwing the pulse. He needs to be a little bit closer. Especially because he has recall. It is a little bit dangerous, yes. But it's not as dangerous as he thinks. Because the rest of his team's there to support him. What's the next thing, right? Choose your time properly. You don't want to go for it when everyone sees you on the flank, clearly. You want to go for it when their their uh, perspective or what they're looking at right is somewhere else wait for your opportunity don't rush it even though you want to open up with the pulse maybe look to wait for another play to happen look for a dive to happen look for your team to create some sort of aggression somewhere right most of the time you'll get a lot of success sticking with these types of tempos and this is where issues come with Tracer players, I feel, in Tier 2 or even in competitive play. Tracer players are going for a first tempo kind of play, and they're trying to stick in first tempo. What do you expect the te enemy team to do if they see you right in front of you, just you, not your team, no one else, you, trying to go for a stick? They're going to either, one, bash you and kill you, two, use abilities to force you out, or three, it's the easiest eat of that diva's life because it's super telegraphed, right? It's super obvious. So you need to understand that the time of when you go for it matters, All right? That's a bracket there, I'd say. Melee range. And boom. That's Tracer Micro in a nutshell for you. To me, the five most important points, some cool little advanced things that kind of explain why he gets a lot of value with this why it seems like he always has them online these cooldowns or why it feels like he's always a big presence in these fights and i think that's a big thing that you need to understand as a viewer if you are or if you're trying to play tracer yourself how is he successful why is he doing it like this right remember you need to be proactive you also need to ask why or how in order to get these kind of things going in your mind get rolling all right